I read 17 books during the month of July, which is just exciting for me because I ended up reading like 10 books last month, which is incredible, but it is like the least amount of books that I've read in a month. And I feel like a large part of that was because in the past I picked out books based on like what other people recommended to me, what was popular. And now I have gotten back into my book era. Like not that I was ever out of it, but like, I have been so like re-inspired to try new books and try new authors and read diverse reads and like read books that maybe aren't hyped up and like more than ever. And I think it's genuinely because I know exactly what I want to read in a story, which is like so exciting because I just have so many good books in this stack. I'm going to go through all the books that I read and share them like in um, the way that I rated them. So that way you guys can not only know my ratings, but you guys can also um, see like which ones I loved the most and which ones that like weren't my favorite. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys uh, subscribe and let's just get into it. So we're gonna start out with the book that I rated the lowest out of this month. And I have not rated a book this low in so long. Like I think it's been, like maybe years, like I don't know, maybe not years, but like it's been quite some time and I rated this book one star and it is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I, I have so many things to say about this book. First, I have to say that whenever I went into this book, I have heard such great things about it. So I just like was, I just knew that this was gonna be a book that I would love because I, I love a good thriller. But I had no idea how many like racial slurs, how many like, just slurs against different communities that I'm not like even a part of were in this book. And I think that that just like really made this book go downhill for me. Initially, like before I kind of got into those parts of the story, I was thinking like, oh, like it's good, but it's definitely giving horror vibes versus thriller, which I don't really like to read thrillers. There was a lot of like graphic, gruesome parts of the story that I think could have been skipped. And I think could have like gotten the, author's point across without like telling all of that detail. And I, I feel like I've shared like my thoughts on this before, but I feel like sometimes authors will almost like exploit the reader's like ability to be human by like making things grotesque or making things extremely traumatizing. Cause like when we see those things, we're like, oh my gosh, like shocked. Like, you know, we're just taken aback. And then we almost feel as if like because we're feeling those feelings that that makes that part of the story like great. For example, I've talked many times about A Little Life, how that book wasn't for me, but I truly feel like the author who does not believe in therapy, especially for men, and who was talking about people who are in the queer community and sharing experiences that they have been through without being a part of that community or without doing any research in that community at all, which just don't even get me started on that. But I feel like seeing that book or like reading that book and kind of feeling feelings of like sadness and like just it being so heavy. So many people will say like, oh, there's a lot of depth to that story, which I do think there is. But I also think that as an author, you know how to exploit your readers and make them feel what you want them to feel, which could in turn make you feel like the book is like incredible. So I feel like the author was kind of doing that in a way with this book. like making it so gruesome, so graphic, so wild that like you almost are like, oh my gosh, wow, like this is amazing, like such a great thriller. But it's like, when you really get down to the story, most of it was told at a like gas station and then they like end up going to this like remote area and then like the rest is told there. And there really isn't like much happening. There's a lot like of the characters trying to figure things out and a lot of gruesome acts that happen but there isn't really a ton of movement if that makes sense so i don't know i just feel like this felt more like a horror book and maybe it is like i could have definitely like picked out the wrong um like type of book that this was but was not my favorite i do think that it would have been rated much higher without the slurs to so many different communities and i know the author was trying to let the reader know that the main character is like bad and like we should not like them and I get that, like I literally got that based on the like character kidnapping people. Like I knew that right off the bat. So like you didn't have to say those things. Like you did not have to say that stuff that you as a white man should not be saying <laughs> in this book. Like it just, I don't know, it just felt very weird. So not my favorite. And 
I have not heard anyone talk about like those things at all when it comes to this book. So definitely be on the lookout if you're going into this book, know that that's in there. And then um, I read two books that I rated three stars. And the first book is Can't Hide From Love by Bianca Xaviera. This book was really fun, but I feel like the main character to me just like wasn't my favorite. Um, and I think that's why I rated it three stars. Three stars is not a bad rating. Like I kind of view three stars as like mid, like it's a good book. Like maybe a TV show that you just like turn on, just like have as filler background when you're like texting or you're just like doing a craft or hobby. Like that to me is like a three star book. Like it's, I'm reading and I'm enjoying it, but it's nothing that like, I probably won't remember the characters' names. Like I probably won't really like, connect with them too much, but I might continue the series. And that is definitely what I'm gonna do with this one because the ending of this book left me on a cliffhanger. And I was like, I am shook. Like I, and I just kind of was like, oh, it's gonna be a good book, like, you know, whatever. And it left me on a cliffhanger and I immediately was like, I need to buy the next book. Like I have to know what happens. Like it's one of those books that literally ends off with you just like mouth on the floor. You had no idea it was coming and so I, I have to buy, you know, and read the second book. So can't wait to read that. I will say that this author's writing was really enjoyable. I just think for me, the main character was what like did it in for me. He at one point like calls the main character like out her name when they meet. And I'm like, that is not a meet cute when you're like, yo B get out the way. Like, I was like, that is like, am I supposed to like this guy? And there were other points in the book where I think he like hits one of the girls, like slaps her or punches her or something. And I was just like, sir, that is not cute. So maybe if you like that in a guy, like you'll really like this book. I just literally got the ick so fast. Like if you put your hands on someone that you love, like that's weird energy. So I, or even someone that you've like cared about in the past, that's like weird vibes. So I definitely am gonna read the second book, even though the main character isn't my favorite because it left on a part was like, I need to know what happens. And I feel like anyone who reads this book is not gonna be able to like just read one book. Like I just genuinely don't feel like that. Like the author did such a good job of making you feel like you have to know what happens next. And speaking of knowing what happens next, I read A Court of Thorns and Roses and this was in my reading fantasy four week video. And I was very surprised by how much I did enjoy this book because I initially went into it thinking that I was like not going to like it. And I also feel like I need to just like realize that the internet is a wild, wild place. Like it's a wild, wild west out there because I know nothing about fantasy. I've really only read uh, Fourth Wing, I've read Shatter Me, and I've read Twilight, which I don't think even really counts because it's not a true like fantasy. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses and I also read Powerless. Now, I read Powerless last month um, and I actually put that in last month's wrap up so you won't see it here, but the video did come out this month because the reading fantasy for a week video actually turned into reading fantasy for like a month and a half because I'm not a fantasy girl. So reading two thick fantasies was a lot for me. Like I kept wanting to gravitate towards romance, but this book, I have seen like lots of TikToks and like lots of stuff on Instagram where people are like, oh my gosh, it's so spicy. Like why are people reading like corn? You know, I just am like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. Cause you guys know I do enjoy spice, but if it's too much, I just kind of am like, I, I don't know. It needs like, it's very rare that I like a book with it that has like a ton of spice and like love it, love it, love it. And don't like want to put it down. Um, I don't know. I just like, it, it's very rare. Now, that's not to say I don't like spice because I definitely do like spice, but it has to have a purpose, you know? Like I need to know that they care about each other outside of like the physical aspects of the relationship. So this book in particular, I thought I was going into this like wildly spicy book. Like everyone's like, oh, it's so spicy. Anyone who's read a romance knows that this is like, this is child's play. Like this is child's play. I was like, where's the spice? I mean, there is spice in it. Like, don't get me wrong. But I think I expected it to be so like out there because of all these like TikToks I've seen about it being like wildly spicy. Like people like, I'll see TikToks where someone will be reading this and they'll be like, are you really just like at the airport, like reading like corn out in public? And like, I read this book and I was like, are we reading the same book? But I think it's because
because I've read like just so many different varieties of spice from like no spice at all to super, super spicy. So this for me literally was child's play. I was like, I'm feeling the spice, but it didn't like overwhelm the story at all. So I think that was like such a nice surprise going into this. I didn't have like that high of expectations, which I think was also helpful. And I think I didn't have high expectations because I'm not a fantasy girl. So if I like a fantasy, it's very rare. I rated Fourth Wing four stars. I rated Shatter Me three and a half stars, I'm pretty sure. Rated Powerless three and a half stars. And I rated this book three stars. Now, I will say, I think that this is a setup book to the rest of the series. I've already purchased the second book in the series. And so many of you guys said if I get past the first book and like somewhat enjoy it, that I probably will like love the second or third or so forth of like the books in the series. So I'm really counting on that because I enjoyed this. Like I did not dislike it. I just feel like if I go into book two and I rate that book three stars, I probably won't continue the series because it's like, oh, it's mid, like it's good, it's fine. But it's nothing to write home about. Like there were a lot of characters in here. I still remember the story of like, you know, everything that happened in here. So we'll see how I feel about the second book, but I definitely did enjoy this book and I'm definitely gonna continue the series. Literally already bought book two. And then the next book um, or book stack that I have are the books that I rated uh, three and a half stars, which actually are a lot. I have so many here. Now these are the books that I like, like to me, like I have all my ratings on Goodreads, but like three and a half is like a little bit above mid. Like it's a little bit above, it's still good. Like it's still enjoyable, like, but it's a little bit above mid. It's not necessarily mid, it's a little bit more. And uh, this was actually the last book that I read in the month. It's called Body Count by Octavia Grant. I read another book of hers in uh, this month. This book honestly was just as like wild as all her other books. And I feel like I'm gonna have to read at least one of her books every month because I just get the need to like read mess sometimes. Like, you know when you watch reality TV, like that's like, this is that to me. Like this is the messiness of reality TV that I enjoy, but in a book form and it's only like 60, 70 pages. This one was a little bit more spicy. Not a little bit. This was a lot more spicy than the other ones. And the other books that I've read by her are spicy, but this one like revolved heavily around the spice, which I mean, look at the cover. It literally is called Body Count. It's a girl and it is talking about how she like pretty much just like, you know, messes around and stuff. And like, that's a lot of the premise of the story. And it's literally like, I mean, it's giving body count. So I should have known going into it that it would be definitely spicy, but I think that I thought that the wildness of the story would maybe override that a bit like her other books. It definitely did in a sense, but I feel like the spice was very, very heavy in this one in comparison to the other ones. Like there was definitely spice in the other ones for sure. Do not go into the other ones expecting there to be no spice because there was still a lot of spice, but this was like, like, whoa, like a lot for me. So rated three stars, still just as enjoyable as her normal writing. It just was a little too spicy for me. And then I read Last Chance Dance by Lakita Wilson. This is my first book by this author. Last Chance Dance was really enjoyable. It's about a girl who she like has some issues with her boyfriend and most of the story you are learning that she like really revolves heavily on her partner and like finds her joy and happiness through them. So when they aren't as available in her life as she wants them to be, she really struggles. Now there's a dance and they have to like decide who they're gonna go with. Um, and there's kind of like a little love triangle in this story, but you also, like I feel like if you've been through a breakup or something like that, you'd really enjoy this because it talks a lot about like learning how to just figure out life on your own and not rely on someone else to make you happy. Um, this was enjoyable. like really liked it. Definitely want to read more from her in the future. And then I ended up reading um, my first book by Kimberly Brown and this is The Last Sad Love Song. If you like books that give like fairy tale esque like that give just happy like there's not too much drama or really any at all like you have a soft boy who's just gonna like just love you from you know morning till night. Like this is the type of book that I feel like you will really want to read. I do kind of wish that I had started with like my first book of this author as like a thicker book because this one is a novella and I'm not the biggest fan of novellas only because sometimes they don't give me enough. Now with Octavia Grant's books, I love these. I love that they're short. I love that they're quick, but it's because I know what I'm getting into. I'm getting into like mess, like reality TV vibes. 
these are more of like a true story so I feel like um, I wish it had just been like I wish I had picked another longer book of hers first but this one was cute if you again like stories that are like very happy like Cinderella vibes like very sweet you will love this is very soft romance and I feel like sometimes my friendships will ask like what's a soft romance by a black author where there's no trauma like it's just happy and like the person just in love and like you don't get all the mess this is the book for that like you will love that like and I think that that is what I loved about this story it felt very soft and warm and I don't know I just really enjoyed and now let's get into some thrillers I read it is raining outside or it was raining I don't think it's raining anymore but I feel like that's made me feel like the cozy vibe is anyone else like ready for fall half of me is ready for fall and the other half of me is not ready for cold weather but I do enjoy like when it rains and it feels very cozy um so I read The Last Mrs. Parish. I really enjoyed this I wish that I had read it before The Housemaid because I personally think this is better than The Housemaid and if you've read The Housemaid and really enjoyed it I still think you'll enjoy this story it has almost the exact same storyline and one of you guys actually said that there's a little drama between the authors of this book and the author who wrote The Housemaid because it's so similar. So you can look that up if you want to at your own leisure, but I had no idea. I knew that like this story was similar and it was written five years prior to The Housemaid, but I had no idea that there was like drama going on. So I was like, ooh, okay, like let me look that up. I need to see what's going on. But I love this story and I ended up buying the second book in this series it's called I think the next Mrs. Parrish um and again this came out years ago but it literally has almost the exact same storyline as The Housemaid so I don't really want to say anything because I don't want to spoil too much but I do think that this villain is a little bit more scary than the other villain and um I definitely was like on the edge of my seat a little bit more than with The Housemaid. Um, and then I read The Phantom Limb by Lucinda Berry. This is one of my favorite authors for thrillers. Her thrillers are fast paced, like they're quick. If you like Freedom McFadden's writing, you will love Lucinda Berry's writing. Like her books just will make you like not want to put them down and they're very bingeable. You'll finish them in like a day or two. Um, and that's what I did with this one. Let's finish so fast and I'm so surprised because I don't know I just feel like books that are this size like this one's a little bit bigger than your average book like not a little bit it's a pretty good amount bigger than your average book I always feel like it's gonna take me a long time but then every time I pick up one of her books I finish it really really fast so this one um was three and a half stars for me her books usually are and then um I read Finding Jupiter and this book was like it gave 90s rom-com vibes like the type of book that makes you think of like love jones like all of that like era i feel like if you like that you will love this book um if you also want to read about a guy who is so loving like he like frequently gets emotional and like cries and like wears his heart on his sleeve and i love guys like that like the Typical like cinnamon roll boy who's like just soft and sweet on the outside and like has a little bit of a tough exterior on the inside but who will do anything for the girl that he loves. You will get that in this story. Um, it also very like lyrical and poetic and I feel like that's rare for me to enjoy but I actually really really love this one. And then uh, I read The Seven Year Slip and this story was surprising to me because I felt like I've heard like so many people say it's about grief I almost wish that they delved into the grief just grief just a tad more like a smidgen more um but it was enjoyable I feel like the flowery writing was not my favorite but I think what I did love about this was you can really tell that the characters cared for each other over the years and I feel like it's hard to write in a book like it's hard I I would assume an author but I would assume that it's hard as an author to make you believe that these characters have cared about each other from day one through like year seven and you could really see that in this story also the guy main character he like made him a nickname for Clementine he called her lemon I just thought that was so freaking cute I think that people who will love this book will be people that really don't read romance a ton because I almost felt like the romance was like a subplot and the other parts of the story were more of like the main focus 
the romance was a focus, but like the other stuff I think a little bit more so. So I feel like people who read literary fiction or who read contemporary fiction will really eat this one up. Like just will be obsessed with it. So for me, that's not my cup of tea, but I know for someone else it will be. Again, I did enjoy it and I've read um, The Dead Romantics by the same author and I'll continue to read books by this author, but um, I feel like those that book is gonna be one that people who normally read contemporary fiction will read. I uh, really loved uh, four, no, not four, this is way more than four. This is six books. Uh, and I rated all these four stars, which I am the type who, it's like very rare for me to rate a book five stars, like extremely rare. And some of these got close. Like some of these, there's even a 4.5 like down there that I'm gonna share with you guys in a second. But uh, all of these are the books that are gonna stick out to me, that I'm going to remember, I'm gonna remember their names, I'm gonna remember quotes. Like the four star books I feel like are the ones that I'm like really obsessed with and I'm gonna like push to tell you guys like please you need to read. And the first one I'm gonna start with is Summer Romance by Annabelle Monaghan. Everyone has been talking about how great this book is and I definitely have to agree that it is great. <laughs> I love this book. I will say that I read the other two books by her. No One Grows Off Script was not my favorite and then I read Same Time Next Summer and was obsessed with that book. So when this book came out, I was just immediately, the day it came out, I think I actually got it the day before it came out. And I was just like, I need it. I need it, need it, need it so bad. And I loved it, like loved it so much. I, I think what I loved most about this book is it doesn't just talk about like finding someone that you love who, I mean, let's just say like the male main character in this, he loves her like you can tell like and his communication skills are top tier but it doesn't just talk about that it talks about learning to stand on your freaking own especially as an adult and it's so easy for us to rely on our parents our partners on everyone else to like make life better and the author did a great job of showing the main character who was very scared to say no she's very scared Oh my gosh, I'm a yawny girl today. She was very scared to say no, and she was very scared to just like have any kind of backbone, and by the end of this book, you can see her transformation. It just was, it was really good. And then I ended up reading um, The Butterfly Garden. This thriller, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm gonna be recommending this forever till the end of time. Like, I cannot wait to read the rest of the series. It's about, a guy who they call the gardener and he kidnaps girls and he like brands them with his like butterfly tattoo and he calls them the girls like in his garden, he calls them their, his, butter, his butterflies and pretty much they're trying to escape. That's like the whole story and it's told in past and present point of view. I really love this. It did read more like crime fiction than like thriller, which I don't normally like, but I ate it up with this book. Absolutely freaking ate it up, did not want to put it down, finished it in like 24 hours. So if you like those types of books, like you will love this one so much. And then I read uh, Love Like the Sun by Riss M. Nielsen. This is a book that I think if you normally read like contemporary fiction, I feel like you could enjoy this story because there are a lot of elements to this that I feel like people who read that type of writing would like. Now. If you're a romance girl, you could definitely read this for sure. But like in the same way that Kennedy Ryan writes books and just like adds so much depth to the story, this author did the same exact thing. And I think this story is just so well rounded and like it's tender and it's heartfelt. And like, I don't say that often about a lot of books, but this one is about a girl, Lanaya, who, oh my gosh, just thinking about it makes me just giggle. It's about Lanaya who she has been best friends with her bestie for years, but they've never had like a thing. And he is like this like famous like model. Everyone's obsessed with him. And they end up having to fake date for reasons I'll let you guys figure out. It literally says on the back though that they end up like doing that. And whenever they end up telling the world that they're dating, um, it brings up a lot of feelings within her because she's like more like shy um, and he's like, you know, in the limelight and stuff. So they kind of have to nav navigate that a little bit. 
but also like the way they loved each other prior to like fake dating you can see their emotions and normally i wouldn't like that because i'm like oh my god like of course we know what's gonna happen at the end of this you know what i mean but i feel like the author did an incredible job of showing how awkward it is to go from like being true friends with someone to like being more and like if you guys don't know Brady and I my husband our love story is a friends to lovers story like we were friends first like true friends nothing else and when we switched from being like friends to lovers it was so awkward because like no one wants to say it you know like no one wants to say like I like you because if they do you could ruin something if the other person doesn't like you back and I feel like this author just did that so well and it's so hard to do to like get that dynamic just right loved it and then i read demon's dream which is like 750 pages of mess but if you like dark romance you will love this story so much i have heard so many of you guys say that i recommended this book and you read it and you finished it in like a day or two days 750 pages y'all i like held off on this book for so long because it was so big which like was so daunting to me when i finally got into it and really started reading it i finished it so fast and i think it's because it's told from the point of view of four different characters so you're not gonna get bored like reading the same thing from the same person it's told from the main character her sister and then this guy uh demon and his friend so four different point of views and wild stuff happens in this story like so wild i wish that this were a series i don't think that it is but i definitely want to read more from l Kaysen because the way that she adds so much stuff that happens in this like if you like stories where it's like touch her and you die like literally i'm going to off you if you touch her like if you like those types of stories and those types of men you'll love this it's about demon who his real name is damien but they call him demon because he literally is just like a stone cold killer like he is he does not care and he is someone who has never really had feelings or emotions towards like a girl and he ends up like having to have i don't want to like i don't want to spoil anything but he ends up having to have close connection with this other girl and within that time he starts to be like ooh, like maybe i do feel something for her but it's like very scary for him and then she's like he's not the type to ever like fall for anyone so like there's no way that he'd be interested in me like it's just so good and then i can't even get into the sister and her story and like all that so very very good story four stars you guys know i don't normally read like i've recently gotten into urban fiction but i would not normally read a 750 page book of really anything and i love this one it's definitely gonna be a highly rated book for me and then when no one is watching is a thriller and this is by a black author i feel like if you liked get out like the movie you'll eat this up that's really all i need to say about this one um four stars very enjoyable it's kind of a thriller like if gentrification were the villain that's like what would be the villain of this book and it's hard to even explain because i can't because it's giving get out vibes but like you will understand that once you read this story and it has so much depth and i definitely want to read more from this author because not only is this author telling a thrilling tale but also telling something that is like a big and a big fear of a lot of people so love that and then dear vicky by octavia grant second book by octavia grant in the month this was technically the first one that i read but rated this one four stars the mess was messing and this main character i had no idea what was gonna happen like literally no idea if you are the type of person who like is in a book slump read something by this author as long as you don't mind spice and like wild things to happen like people dying and stuff like if you don't mind that read one of this author's books work husband body count and dear vicky are the three that i've read and i'd say i think my favorite is i don't know dear vicky and work husband are about the same they're both wild like they're so wild so keep that in mind when you go into it but it's not gonna be the type of book where you can like actually predict what's gonna happen the book that i rated 4.5 out of 5 stars is black rainbow which is so surprising to me because this book is so like not my vibe like i do not like the cover of this book but the banter in this book was incredible i still remember the story the characters their names like how deeply i felt for them and this is a story about two people who they have a one night stand and while they're having that one night stand they're like wow this is like the most incredible connection i've had in the longest time let's keep this rolling so let's like hook up for the week and then just like be done at the end of the week 
end of the week comes, they say their goodbyes. She goes to class. She's a law student. Goes to her first class. Her professor, the guy she hooked up with, yep. <laughs> Yep, it's the guy she hooked up with. So the whole time that he's her teacher, there's tension. Um, but he's also a teacher who is well known for like, if you're in his class and you can like pass, you're gonna get like any job that you want because he's like so cutthroat. And so she's like, I want this class. Like I want to be in this. But he is like giving her so much grief because he doesn't really want her in the class. Cause he's like, this is tempting for me. I've already hooked up with her. Like I'm starting to care about her. Um, so you see that, but then there's also like different cases and stuff cause he is a lawyer. So you get to see like some of the court side stuff that he like works through. Um, and then as students like working through that, but also their tension. <laughs> It's just so good and I was so surprised. Like also the banter in this is great. I will say it's very spicy. Like one of the spicier reads that I've read probably all month, but I did not mind at all. And I think that that just goes to show that the story has a lot of spice, but also a lot of depth, which is like the only time I enjoy spice. Like if there's a lot of spice, it does not bother me truly. Like obviously I rated this 4.5 out of five stars, but if there's a lot of spice, it doesn't bother me if the depth and passion and like beauty of the romance is also like put on a pedestal. And it definitely is in the story. You can tell that they like love each other so much. Just, ah, I just literally was giggling this whole time reading this book. And there's also like deeper themes and things that will make you feel emotional and cry and I feel like you'll really love this one. Do not let this cover fool you. It's a fairly like decent read too. It's only like 309 pages. Um, so it's really easy to get through and it's told in the past, in the present timeline. So you stay like really invested. There's a lot of stuff that happens in it. So again, it's like something that isn't just like a typical romance. Like you will stay invested, you will not be bored. So those are all the books that I read during the month of July. I cannot believe that I almost read 20 books. Next month, maybe I will. I feel like in the past, I used to read like 16 to 20 books a month. And then I kind of got to a point where I was only picking up books that other people would recommend. And they weren't necessarily books that I was excited to read, but they were books that other people enjoyed. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll like them. But now I've just been picking up banger after banger after banger because I'm picking up books that I love. So you guys could see that there are so many highly rated books in this stack. And I'm sure there will be even more next month because this is like my first true month of like, like I did a big unhaul last month in June. So this is my first like true month of having like only like books that are just like books I'm absolutely obsessed with and which is why I think I have so many great books here. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying your reading too and I wanna encourage you guys to like really read books that like make you excited, whether that's a graphic novel, whether that's a short novella, whether that's a thick book that's 150 or 850 pages, not 150. Like I just feel like you can so easily let people sway you to read what they think you should read, but you know what you wanna read. You know? So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below what your favorite read was of this entire month or last month in July. And I'll see you guys in my next one. <laughs> Bye guys.